thoughts on these issues in the news is a public affairs analyst and uh, a gentleman of the press from the People's Reporter as well, talking about none other than Olarawaju Fobi Desmond. Well, welcome. Welcome to the show. We hear that you're joining us from Okitipupa this morning. How's the weather over there? The weather is bright. Like, good morning, uh, Bito. Good morning, Nigeria. Uh, the weather is bright, as you all know, that uh, Ondo State is the sunshine state where you expect the sun to shine and to set first before any other state. So you can see from behind, the weather is so bright here in Okitipupa this morning. Well, notwithstanding, we'd have to check our NIMET advisory and be sure that Ondo is not one of the states where we're expecting three days of thunderstorms. But that's on a lighter note. Let's get straight into our discussion for today. Now, ahead of tomorrow's Independence Day anniversary, one person who is very optimistic about Nigeria's hopes is the President of the Senate. He's made headline story on one of the newspapers this morning, and he's preaching optimism that indeed our nation can prevail despite our bumpy days. What's your mood and what are you hoping would be the mood of patriotic Nigerians ahead of tomorrow's independence anniversary? Uh, I would also want to be optimistic. I would like to align and join my thoughts with that of the Senate President, uh, Senator Goswi Apabio, about Apabio, for his optimism uh why we may have our up and downs nigeria is a work in progress for the fact that for so many years we've not been battling with civil wars as well as we've not been battling with some kind of a situation that called for international you know hate our machineries to come and take over this country like some countries have suffered. For me, it is a, a sober reflection, but that which requires every Nigerian to be gratitude, to be grateful, and show some level of gratitude to the God Almighty for where we are coming from, where we are, and where we are going to. I'm so optimistic, and I believe with the level of natural resources, human capital level, capacity, Nigeria stands as one of those countries in the world that will be great, just like every other country. Every country of the world have had their fair share from the troubles of economic and political development. Nigeria will definitely be good, Bito. Nigeria will get better. But the only thing that I think Nigeria needs to understand is that if you check the history of every country of the world, they always have a father to father a nation. Before a, a country can move or transit into a nationhood, there is always a fatherhood, a father that would nurture that country to become a nation. To me, Nigeria is more or less like a nation state. And there is this unhealthy rivalry among the different nations of the country. The different nationalities of the countries. We need to unite our thoughts. We need to be united as people for this country to move to a pedestal of hope, for this country to be a better country, for this country to be the country of our dream, we need to have a collective and a shared vision that is clear and everybody resonates with. From that time, upward, we can have a functional and a working country. But unlike, underlying this world, what is very paramount right now is that we are not getting it right because we are still rival with ourselves. Until all the nations within Nigeria, I'm talking about different ethnic nationalities in the country, come together and understand the country and take ownership of the country and consider this country as their own and align our vision on today, Nigeria is, is going nowhere. But if we can come together, Nigeria have the potential 
of becoming one of the greatest country of this world, not just in Africa. Now, very well said, Honorable Desmond. Our potentials cannot lie in any way. But talking about this perceived rivalry between different regions of the country, the Senate is going to begin a retreat today. And this retreat is on the need for a new constitution. Some of the agendas that will be topping uh, the scorecard in this retreat are issues of state creation, state police. Do you think that by the creation of more regions, we're seeing the Southwest Development Commission coming on board, Southeast Development Commission as well, this would help assuage some of the yearnings based on perceived marginalization. And uh, what people would say is uh, a fair sharing for our national wealth. Yes. Uh, I'll go with the last church uh, opinion of some people that is the fair sharing of our national common wealth. The truth of the matter is why the Senate uh, or, or idea is a very good one to go on retreat towards the uh, formation of our constitution or some of the content of our constitution. For me, I consider that too it's um it's for me it's an opium it is not necessary at this material time changing or amending our constitution is not the problem of nigeria i tell you Bito, nigeria is a country which part with one of the best policies some of the content in the constitution the problem we have always had in this country is the implementation of some of the character of that constitution in our daily lives, in our business and our activity. That has been the major problem. So what I think the Senate president, the president of the Federal Republic needs to do is a robust reorientation campaign. The country value system is currently being eroded and the country reward system is also falling. So the country is gradually moving into a country of mediocrity, where mediocrity is celebrated over excellence and merits. So what we should what we are what we should rather focus on as a country is to see that the people of Nigeria consider themselves as a stakeholder in the country's journey to stardom as well as invoke the spirit of unity, the spirit of love, oneness, and also respect the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And this is not just about the followers. In effect, I'm also talking about the leadership of this country. The leadership of this country needs to see themselves as fathers, Anyone who has been elected into an elective position should see himself or herself as a father, as a mother that needs to mother and father this country to greatness. That is what we're doing right now. We need value reorientation. We need the spirit of unity, love for this country to work. It is not about changing context. It's not about changing words. When lack of patriotism is the order of the day, you cannot invoke the spirit of patriotism by changing some letters in the constitution, but by align, by letting people understand the collective and the shared vision of the country. Then after that, we can now go for constitution amendment. At this time, if you bring any changes to come to that constitution without properly reorientating the people and letting the people see themselves as a partner, a progress of making Nigeria a great country, I tell you, it is an effort in futility. Now, some of the other issues that are also high, highlighted by this retreat is uh, the move by Southeast, South-South senators who are solidly behind this creation for new states and are also conversing for the creation of state police. How would this help mitigate some of the challenges that the regions are dealing with at the moment based on insecurity in that perspective? Uh, Bito, you cannot solve a problem 
You understand? By creating more problems. Today, there are so many states in Nigeria that are states, but still depends on federal government to pay salaries. And not because these states do not have the capacity or the potential, you understand, to feel, to feed the people of the state. But the major challenge is that creating states and giving them certain allocation from the country, from the federal pops, has not helped Nigeria to grow. But rather, healthy competition among states, tapping from the natural resources, thinking widely on how to convert some of the resources, even human resources to wealth. States have not been able to do that. So you are creating more states will not solve that problem. You are creating more problems. Well, because of the contest, because of the Nigerian contest, because people are yet to understand our shared vision, or because the shared vision is not very clear. A lot of people in the part of this world have not really understood what is Nigeria vision. Where is this country going into? What do we tend to achieve in the next 10 years? What is Nigeria hoping to achieve in the next 20 years? And coming together, to achieve those things. People are yet to see themselves in that way, or even the country as a whole, majority of Nigerians are not seeing themselves in that way. So they believe that when you create states, you create states, more states uh, will solve the problem. The problem is not about creating states. It's about equity. It's about having access to resources that is very, very few. And these few resources are not evenly distributed among the people of the country and that is why we're having the conflict we are having don't, don't forget that conflict is natural conflict is a natural phenomenon with every country with every people but what is bad is violent conflict and when you talk about conflict the major cause of conflict in the world is what scarce resources but in the context of nigeria our resources are not completely scarce. But the problem is that poor management of these resources have been the reason why the country has been bedeviled with poverty, with crisis, and other things. So what we need is reformation of leadership character. It's about having people to father this country, having governors to father their states, to have sincere love for the people of the states. It's not about creation of many states. But in Nigeria, we might understand that some people have been agitated. That why do we have to have 19 states in the north and having less 17 in the, in, the, in the south? That it will be good because of election. All these are still selfish in, in reasons. Because when a purpose of a thing is not known, abuse becomes inevitable. The reason why people are demanding for states, the past bills that when they have more states, they, 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 they will have access to becoming governor. They will have access to get directly from the federal government. Do you know that in Nigeria presently, the region that tend to have more states are the region crying more for, for, for AIDS? I'm talking about the northern part of the country. The northern part of the country have about 19 states, and yet none of these states, most of these states, or I beg your pardon, most of the states are still depending on the allocation from the federal government before they can pay salary to their workers. So it is not about creation of states. It's about understanding the resources and positioning human beings to take advantage of converting these resources into a resource. That's where we should be talking about. Now, 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 that be said, let's move past this issue and look at another very sensitive issue in the news. This is the eve of our Independence Day, but attention now is shifting to the planned nationwide protest to hold tomorrow. Civil society organizations are urging President Bola Metinibu to make an address early enough to forestall this protest. What do you think would be the outcome? Should the president dialogue now or should it be carried in his speech tomorrow? Do you think that those who are sponsoring the protest would be willing to grant the president a listening ear to avert some of the economic losses and also address pertinent issues that affect the country. I will be back and forth with this issue of protest 
since August. And I've always maintained this position, Vito, that protest cannot solve the problem of Nigeria at this material time. Rather, we should embrace constructive dialogue, constructive discussion, constructive negotiation with governments. Some of the people calling for this protest or sponsors of this protest, they're a bit irrational and they're a bit very selfish. I tell you, I've seen different characters calling for protest. Meanwhile, even in their own personal organization, they have not been fair with all their employees. Even in their community, they have not been fair in the distribution of these natural resources or this wealth or affluence they have with the members of their community. Now, calling for national protests in order to cripple the economy and cause more hardship to the people has never been a win-win situation. Rather, left more pain so than expected. For me, I believe in constructive engagement, constructive collaboration, negotiation with government. I am not at peace. I am not pleased with some of the policies of the government. But yet, what I've been doing on a daily basis is to engage with government to see that we bring about a positive change to those policies. And we can actually go on protest. Perhaps it's going to be non-violent, it's going to be peaceful, and it will not hamper the progress of the society or affect lives, affect the businesses of others that are in the country who do not share in that opinion or belief that protest is necessary at this particular time. But because we do not have the capacity to ensure this peaceful protest in Nigeria, if we claim we love this country, we are not supposed to be part of the problem. We are supposed to be part of the solution. Protest is not, the solu is not part of the solution. Protest is part of the problem that we are having in Nigeria. So if you claim you love this country and you want change, why not constructively engage the government uh, to some large extent? If there is one thing that this particular government of Ashiwaju, Bola Ahmed Tunumbu, can be given thumbs up for is that it's a listening government and it has been proactive in listening to the yearnings of agitators and protesters. So it is not good to, to reward this government with continuous protest. So somebody like me, I have some ministers, I have some head of agencies that if at all you want to ask for redress, you can call Mr. President to remove these people or replace them from that office. Now, now Honorable Desmond, that government. has been a big talking point. Say you want to change the a lot of persons are asking because the yeah. president had promised Nigerians on New Year's Day in his address that by this time there would be a shakeup in his cabinet based on performance he would have to rejig his cabinet. Do you think that this should be part of his speech tomorrow? Letting Nigerians know the ministers it's in excellent. whom he feels that the renewed hope agenda is being brought to light and asking those who have not been part of the progress to step aside. It is an excellent decision from the president if he can do that. He has solved about 25% of the people's problem because the president alone cannot do it all. And then there are people that are on board with the president on this renewed hope mantra that are not qualified or do not have the empathy to be a leader or to be in that in those sensitive offices so if the government have decided today that he is going to replace or reshuffle some people from his cabinet it is an excellent decision you know some weeks some months ago on this studio i was in this studio where i talked about some performing ministers and we mentioned some names among the ministers that I said is less performing was Honor, uh, Chief Adebayo Adelabu. But today, I give him turn ups. I am in Okitukupa today, and they have lights. I've been using lights in this hotel for over 16 hours. And the same thing in Lagos. I was in Lagos yesterday. I had over 20 hours of electricity, and some other places I've been to. 
So like I told you sometimes, it is good to give time to know what they are doing because when you appoint somebody, you need to give the person time to first of all do his own research and set a template that is going to work with and a framework for him to achieve certain results. You know, as at that time, I told you that we need to give some of these ministers some time. And then part of the reward of giving some of these ministers time, some of them have sit up and sit tight and they're working perfectly right now. And we're beginning to enjoy some of the dividends of government. Meanwhile, some ministers are adamant. They are not listening and they are not even ready, responsive to the yearnings of the people. So they would, would you like to give us an example of some of those ministers you feel are non-performing? Would you like to give us some example of some non-performing ministers? Uh, you see the Minister of uh, Communications. I'm not seeing what that young man is doing. I'm not seeing what uh, Bosun, uh, is it Bosun, uh, Minister Bosun, Minister of Communications. I'm not seeing what he's doing. It is not witch hunting. I've never mentioned his name in any forum. I personally, two different organizations have approached these ministries, give recommendations on how they can involve more young people. Look at our young people with skills. These are assets. This in the, in the, in the, these young people independently are making money from the digital space. What has the, uh, the Minister of Communication do in bringing these people together to see that this, instead of making money personally, why not unnest their skills, unnest their talent for national growth and development? You're not organizing symposium. You're not engaging with the community. You just believe that you have some ideas in your head and you want to execute. A nation does not go that way. And there are so many others, but I wouldn't want to mention them right now. But then, the Minister of Agriculture needs to do more, you understand, because we're talking about diversification. Diversification. What has that done for us? You understand? No, no, Minister no. of uh, a Blue Economy, what has it done? The, the Minister of Blue Economy, the one who was compensated for losing the election in the two states, we were told that this blue economy is going to have about $4 billion to our economy within some quarters. As of today, it's still certain templates, and we are not seeing anything. Minister of Solid Minerals, today, our communities have now been eroded. A lot of invaders coming to mine our resources, and yet we are not seeing anything. Because some of these people, they settle some people in government. And you see, all these are the problems you're having. Do you know that it is easy for you to set up a company, a mining company in Ghana, in other parts of the country, rather than setting it up in Nigeria? Because of what? You still need to buy cut corners and settle some people and have a personal experience in respect to that. So the Minister of Blue Economy, the Minister of Solid Minerals, they need to sit up and work hard. Minister of Agriculture, they need to engage more young people and others. We are talking about renewed hope. We should not continue to do things the way we do things and expect to get results. We need to be fair to all Nigerians who have the capacity to improve. And also the minister, the minister of state of NMP of um, petroleum resources, NMPC. I know the minister is the president, the state. So they need to sit up to, to see that our refineries are working. It is not a time for us to be selling. NMPC have now been reduced to a marketer that sells poor. Petrol for Dangote, it's an insult. It's an aberration. It's an insult to our national, our, our collective uh, sense of, 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 of a nationhood. For us as a country, they have four refineries and reduce to be selling, to become a sale agent to a private company. It we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a bit because... We'll get to that in a bit because that's the publication on The Guardian. We'll look at it. The Guardian has given us some of the statistics and I'd like for you to make your point when we get there. But now, in moving forward to another issue in the news, which many are saying might be a move to forestall the plan, plan protest for tomorrow, yesterday we saw disbursements of 64 CNG buses to particularly labor and uh, students leader under NANS. Many are asking the question of why 64 were promised over 2,500 CNG buses. The government is promising that 2,000 CNG tricycles would follow shortly. The CNG promise and this move, uh, do you think it is unrelated to the planned protest tomorrow? 
Should it have come earlier? What do you make of this deployment? Vito, I've told you before that there are opposes to all these things. And I also tell you, it's not about getting these buses. It's not a difficult thing to get or to convert our vehicles to CNG or to import some of these vehicles CNG. You understand? You need to also look at other infrastructure, which includes what? The CNG stations, plants and stations, where vehicles can just drive in and refill these gases. How many do we have in Abuja as I speak to you? We have just three uh, stations of CNG in Abuja. And then in Lagos and Kaduna, they are still having issues of infrastructure for this CNG. It's not about invest, uh, importing CNG, importing the key to combating. You can even import 10,000 CNG. But the question is, do we have the infrastructure to support it? Even some of these CNG vehicles that the president has given to people, you will find out that some of them won't be able to use them because of what? Inability or access to these CNG stations. And that is where the issue is. The president or the federal government should be talking to us today. How many CNG stations have they been able to set up? That is what I want to hear, not about these CNG buses. Because independently, and in the, some individuals, some investors can bring in these kits and bring in these vehicles. But the problem is setting up these stations at the big deal and having access to these CNG gases at the big deal. So government should intensify efforts. But at the same time, we need to give the president kudos for promising and fulfilling the promise a bit by bit. But government can do better in saying that they accelerate actions to see that we have not just the buses, but stations across Nigeria. Now, in, in keeping with this promise, would do well to monitor the conversion and also the availability of stations. But to an earlier comment, which you also acknowledged, was a publication on the Daily Times, comments from the Minister of Power, Chief Adebayo Adelabu, who says, more than 40% of Nigerians now enjoy 20 hours of electricity. He's saying more than 40% of Nigerians are, by this comment, on Band A. Now, we saw protests in some areas in Lagos following the arbitrary rate and the hiking, the Band A tariff. Do you believe that, indeed, 40% of Nigerians are on Band A? You said in where you are currently, there's been quite stable power. But many ask that, is this tariff reflective of the electricity that they enjoyed? How do we adjudge these comments and be sure that Nigerians are, in effect, enjoying as much as 20 hours of electricity? Uh, you know, Bito, I told you something earlier that uh, in this studio, when the news broke that there was a rapid or a sharp increment in electricity. Tariff. I did not fault his plans as at that time. The only thing I faulted was that it should not muzzle or skills life out of people just because he wants to improve electricity supply to the country. Rather, he should look at on, on metered homes, metered and metered them so that they can have access to what's revenue. Because there are a lot of people in this country that are enjoying electricity free of charge. And there are so many government organizations, government buildings that have in their alloc budgeting allocation electricity free, but refused to pay for the use of electricity. What I was asking the Minister of Power to do at that material time was to see how they can ensure that they generate more tariff from omitted homes and agencies of government that have refused to pay instead of putting more pressure on the few Nigerians that are paying for electricity. But so far, so good. The increment in the electricity fee has helped to put certain infrastructure and steady supply of gas for the servicing of the turbines, the turbines that we have in the country, which has increase the supply of electricity in our homes. But then, Nigerians are going through a lot already. It is not the Nigerian people who are paying for this thing. 
that you are supposed to, 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 to skew life out. It is the federal government, from the money they are getting from subsidy remover, they need to subsidize some other things. Part of the thing the federal government needs to subsidize is not just health, but also electricity and also support building of homes because these are basic amenities. The federal government cannot do this, state government cannot do this. What else can a responsible government do for our, pe our people that almost depend on themselves before they can, can live? And right now, there is hardship everywhere due to the increment in petrol pump price, which has affected cost of goods, cost of livings. So it is not enough for you to say you want to improve lives and be hardening hardship to them. Just about some days or some weeks ago, I also heard the Minister of Works trying to introduce tolling to some area, some, some road, major road in the country as his own way of generating money. Government is lazy. Nigeria governments are lazy. We can generate billions, trillions from blue economy, from digital economy, as well as from the solid minerals. But because the government are not creative, they are always looking for easy way to make money. And the easy way to make money is to skill the people dry. And that is what I was against. So far, so good. There is improvement in electricity across Nigeria. But I am not in any way in support that the only means in which you can have more revenue to put this infrastructure in place is skilling the people dry. Now, in moving forward, let's look at other prominent issues in the news that uh, have been somewhat controversial. Now, and away from national issues is also the need for us to sanitize our institutions. A social media activist, Very Dark Man and Bob Risky, are expected to appear before the National Assembly today. Now, this is owing to controversies as to bribery and extortion to the tune of 15 million that saw Idris Okoneye, popularly known as Bob Risky, claim not to have been incarcerated in Kirikiri as against the court order. Now, many Nigerians are asking, should there be a VIP treatment where it, most, it almost seems as though if you have the money, you can escape being incarcerated in correctional centers. What do you make of the National Assembly summon of the parties involved? And is this somewhat of a dent in the EFCC's credibility? Um, let me tell you, there are many Nigerians who are suffering this kind of treatment. And that is the reason why some people still find crimes very attractive. They find crimes attractive because they know that if being caught, they can, they can bribe the judges, they can bribe the court. And the events where that fails, they can as well bribe the prison warders and prison, prison officers, or even some of these people for soft landing, and that is preferential treatment. This is what has affected our society today. Some people will tell you that I will kill you and nothing will happen. And truly, they will kill you and nothing will happen. And that is why you see that the country is not progressing. I want the National Assembly uh, to be very fair and to be strict with this uh, intervention. Calling on the parties involved, the National Assembly should ensure there is poverty. The National Assembly should ensure that they restore sanity to our system. Whoever is being caught in this ongoing crisis and tozo on the social space to be punished severely any officers that is involved in this case should be punished anybody who has collected money or bribe to give idris okunaye preferential treatment at the prison should be made to pay for it until we do this, we will not restore any sanity to our institution. Our institution, we have a lot of bad eggs that needs to be fished out. If we refuse to do that, we are moving nowhere. 
Nigeria is a wonderful country, but we have few elements that are against the progress of this country. Part of these elements are members of the EFCC, prison correctional service, that have decided to mend affairs with Idris by collecting, extorting money and collecting money to give him this kind of treatment that is now giving the country an embarrassment. This is a national embarrassment. And the federal government needs to do something squarely to restore sanity to the system. Now, we've also seen some actions taken by the Minister of Interior where some high-ranking officials in the Nigerian Correctional Service have been placed on suspension. Is that indeed enough? Many are asking if there is credible evidence. Shouldn't there be prosecution against them? It is not enough to suspend. Suspension can be some weeks. It could be indefinite suspension. It could be for some period of time while the investigation lasts. But what I am saying is this. The Ministry of Interior needs to be fair to all parties. But whoever is a culprit in this ongoing saga, I want to plead with the federal government to do more than just suspension, but also to see that that person is punished so that it will serve as a scapegoat or a deterrence to other officers or other members of the society who are privileged to be working with the federal government in different capacity to sit up and sit tight. Sitting up and sit tight means progress for the country. Now, another human angle story in the news earlier reported by the Daily Trust newspaper is the sad recurrence of some civilian casualty in efforts of the military to flush out bandits. In Kaduna, we're told that there has been a disagreement between residents and NAF over the airstrike that has killed scores. 23 worshippers were amongst the victims, and uh, the Air Force is insistent that they only hit a terrorist base. Uh, it's again in question of how we approach issues of fighting banditry and terrorism. What do you make of this news report? That shows you how unintelligent some of our military can be. Why we want to applaud their heroic efforts and their onslaught against banditry. We appreciate the military and we appreciate their heroic for fighting for the safety of lives and properties and sanity of this country. Why that is so? They need to be more intelligent in approaching this fight against this banditry. And that is why, you see, the issue of community policing is very, very important, important and intelligent gathering is very important. You see, there is a situation in the country right now, and that is the civilians and the bandits are now collaborating. They are now living together. That is why this fight against banditry in Nigeria is difficult. I'm telling you, some Nigerians are benefiting from the from this banditry and insecurity in the northwest, in the northeast. Some people are relating directly. You see, this banditry wouldn't have been succeeding in this persecution and this havoc they are causing in these communities without the compliance or without the support of some civilian mem some civilian society. So that is why the police and the civil relation department of the military needs to go deep into the communities to use intelligent gathering to see that they're able to separate the wheat from the chaff. This continuous assault, killing, throwing the water, the baby away with the bad water, has been a major human rights issue in the country. And it has not yielded any positive result. Some months early this year, we had about 155 people that were mistakenly killed in the same cardinal, you know, as a result of what? Trying to persecute uh, this guerrilla welfare, welfareans. So what I want to ad advise, what I want to suggest to the Nigerian military, the naval, and the Air Force is that they need to do more of what? Community policing, 
to be able to separate the members of the civil society, the civil community from these bandits. Because the current re reality in the Nigerian society is that you see the civilian and the bandits, they are now working hand in hand collaboratively because of some benefits they are getting from this uh, evil heart. So if you continue to approach this conflict this way or this war this way, we'll be ha having more civilian casualties. That is just the truth, too. Now, before we get to issues of the economy in closing, let's also look at another issue. It continues to be a lingering dispute between the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, and the federal government. Following the expiration of a 21-day ultimatum, ASU issued another seven-day notice to the federal government over unpaid allowances and are threatening a strike. How do you perceive that this issue would be resolved forthwith? Uh, like I always maintain that our problem in Nigeria is that government are rather reactionary, not proactive. The government will not do what they are supposed to do at the right time until when it is a crisis, they will not intervene in managing it. The issue of ASU and the federal government is, is a long due issue that should not be surfacing in 24 in 2024 we've been talking about asu 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 since the return of the fourth republic during the era of president olushegun or passenger we had the same issue during the era of yaradwa the same thing during the era of good luck a bit jonathan we had a share of that during the era of buari momodo buari and now Tinobu is facing it and this thing does not require rocket science. It is a simple mathematics. It all tells you about the general level of our governance in this country. We are talking about education sector. A lot of Nigerians find refuge, even in Benin Republic, to study in Cameroon. Imagine, how can you leave a country like Nigeria to, come to Benin Republic to, to study? That is to tell you that something is wrong with our education sector. Our education sector really needs serious intervention or a state of emergency. All this management style has not helped, and it will not help in any way. What we need to do is to declare a state of emergency. It's not even about settling uh, the increment or paying the allowances. Look at our state of education, Vito. Is it what you would want for a country that is the most populous black country of the world? The giant of Africa? Our education system does not depict that we are the peace, that we are the giants of Africa. Look at our education system. Look at our schools. We are an individual lecturer. We have to be the one that will power a generator before you can carry out experiments in classes. Is that the kind of education we want for ourselves? The reason why you have a lot of half-baked graduates everywhere is because our education system has been underfunded and has not been given the due attention that it requires. Yet, we have some people, individual students, who have gone outside their way to become pride of the nation. But let me tell you, do our education system deliver the best education that can see to national growth and development. If you ask me, I will say no. And that is why I think beyond paying these areas or allowances, it's about setting things in motion and put our education in a way where it will be autopilot, generate its own money. What stops our university from having a community of a community of growing industry, industrial community? agricultural community where they can generate funds electricity can generate money uh, sorry university can generate money our universities can generate enough money if only we put the right policies in place and that is what i am talking about it is not continuous putting pressure on federal government even the hassle the federal government the students we need to come together a tripartite meeting where we discuss how our education can be self-reliance in terms of funding. 
that we do not need to start putting so much pressure on the federal government allocation, which is not even enough. For me, we have not gotten it right, but I think it is about time that we need to get it right in our education sector. Because if you can get it right from the education perspective, I tell you, this country will be on the path of progress and goodness in no, uh, in no due time. Now, in closing, in 10 minutes, let's look at other issues as it relates to Nigeria's economy. Now, a good number of newspapers looked at the trajectory as Nigeria projects to be able to achieve $1 trillion economy. But from the angles of some of the factors pulling that trajectory back, on the one hand, the Naira devaluation, we're told that today, the Naira exchanges with the dollar at 1,700 Naira per dollar, whilst only seven out of 20 subsidiaries of NNPCL are thriving amidst over 22 trillion Naira debt. How do we get this economy back on track? Many are also speculating that there might be a change in uh, the Minister of Finance as well. Uh, I would also suggest that uh, there should be also changing not just the Minister of Finance, Minister of Finance, CBN Governor, the two of them needs to go because they don't understand Nigeria economy. They've been in Nigeria for many, many years. They've been in industry, but they do not understand the dynamics of Nigeria's economy. I know Mr. President on his own does not carry out policies. Some of these policies you see, they are not the sin of actual development. They are the sins of some of his cabinet members that is giving him wrong advice. Don't suspend subsidy on petroleum and suspend subsidy on dollar. Those two policies, floating of, of our naira, is not a good policy that should complement where subsidy removal if you really want economic growth. And the people who are doing this advice, this advice to the president is the civilian governor and the Minister of Finance. And at this point, I think if the president wants to be fair to this country, you see, this narrow floating is not helping us in any way. Rather, it's causing more problem to the economy. And that is why all the good policies, all the good intervention is not sinking well into the community and giving us any positive results. My advice at this point is that the president needs to sit down. You know, life, we have to be flexible. He may have this ideology that if I float never, if I remove subsidy, the country will work. But let me tell you, there are certain policies that does not marry, that does not complement each other. And that is first subsidy removal and the removal of subsidy on error, as well as floating on error and taxing people. The economy will be circled. It will be circled. It will not expand. It will not grow. The reason why we are even having life in the country right now, able to pay salary, is because of what? Because of the first subsidy removal. This narrow floating has not contributed anyway to the development of this country. How many industries, industrial park, have we been able to implant or envisage that is being planted right now as a result of what? Floating our narrow. The narrow floating is supposed to world's uh, uh, investors. It's supposed to improve productivity and increase industries. But how many industries are set are coming up? Instead, many industries are shutting down. Many companies are closing down. So that policy is not working. So who are the people in charge of this? The CBN governor, Kadoso and Wale Edu. These people need to go. They need to go. We need to have. A, a, a breath of a fresh air. We need people that understand the dynamics of Nigeria economy. Because if you look at paper economy, if you look at foreign economy, it's the solution over there might not be the solution that we need in this country. And that is why it is important we understand our terrain very well. It is not about, oh, this policy looks good on paper. It's about in practicality, how would the people react? Or does it complement the ongoing policies of the federal government? That is where we are missing it. And that is why the federal government, as a matter of urgency, urgency needs to rejig its cabinet to bring people that have understanding of the dynamics of the Nigerian economy and the social political issues, which will support growth to come on board and put this 
in perspective and let Nigerians get the feel of the renewed hope that they voted for. Now, in closing, one last question, and it's following reports that 96% of SMEs are struggling under the current inflation, whilst Nigeria has also approved 320 loan applications at this time. What, what does that intend for the Nigerian people? Vito, it is the, you know, when we talk about some of these policies, we are talking about sustainability. These loans does not sustain business. It is the economy, the right framework that supports sustainability, sustainability of the SME, medium scale enterprise. As it is, giving loans, it's just the same thing, like just creating states or giving states bailouts. As giving states bailouts help to solve the problem of unemployment in states or help to bring soccer to the lives of the people in the states, no. It is not about bringing loan. It's about the environment, the economy, the business environment. Does it really support growth? Inflation will kill medium and small scale enterprise. And that is why many businesses are shutting down. Many people are closing their business. Many people can no longer do business in Nigeria because of inflation. And even the inflation, we cannot even understand. Like I told you, if there was a progress in our economy, you will see that the inflation will be dropping. It will be dropping. Every quarter, it will be dropping. That is to monitor that these policies are working. The reason why you see the price going up and coming down, going up and coming down, is because we've not been able to understand the economy and put the right policies in place that will see to steady growth of the country economy. And the basic, uh, the basic life wire of our economy is this small scale and medium enterprises. If we can put in a policy that will help this small scale and medium enterprise, I tell you that the economy, it will, it will cause a contraction in the economy that you see that the dollar and this forest will start coming down. But because the people, the majority of the people are being shut out of business presently, that is why you see that the Naira is losing weight every day. So we need to understand that and then we need to do something to push it that. And then as we approach another line, uh, milestone in our journey as a country, it is a time for a sober reflection and a time for every one of us to do a U-turn. Not just the leaders, not just the people we elect in offices, but also the, the, the leaders of thought, religious leader, traditional leader, youth leader, and the followers. We need to do a U-turn. We need to stop doing things the way we do things. We need to change. We need to, for once, love this country. It is a clarion call for me that all Nigerians need to be patriotic. It is only when we are patriotic that policies work. It's only when we are patriotic that this country will work. So I'm using this uh, opportunity of marking our independence tomorrow to call on Nigerians to be patriotic, love one another, shun quick money and believe in hard work because the reason why god it looks like god has turned his face away from us is because we are looking for quick way to make money god will only bless the work of our hand as a country so we need to change from this dimension of making money from yahoo yahoo and other things and start legitimate business let's start legitimate endeavor that will bring to a a steady a steady inflow of economy to our pocket and adding value to the to the country. That is the only way we can move forward as a country. And to all our elected officers, we should know that power is transient. Now that we are given the opportunity to lead in any capacity, try to be patriotic. Try to leave an indelible, indelible mark. Try to leave a legacy that will outlive you. Thank you and God bless you. Well, thank you very much for your time on the program this morning, Honorable Desmond. We wish you the best of your week ahead and a happy Independence Anniversary as well.
Well, that's as Thank much as we so can much. take on our I local newspaper review segment. We'll take a break and when we return, we'll turn our attention to the overview of foreign newspapers and headline stories on tabloids from across the globe. Please stay with us.